I remember when those days I was still doing my government job. I got married and I used to exercise guardianship. My wife did not know that there were devils till I got posted to Lagos. She now woke up one night and said she wants to do three days prayer and fasting. And on the third day, a spirit came into the room, walked through the wall and told my wife that Madam Sarah has instructed me to tell you to stop this prayer. Then she called me because it's when she enters trouble. She, hey, my husband. <laughs> Somebody walked through the wall and warned me. I said, what were you doing before the person got agitated? I said, I did uh, three days fast. I said, no, there's nothing like three days prayer and fasting. Minimum is 21 days. I remember when those days I was still uh, doing my government job and I got married and I used to exercise guardianship. My wife did not know that there were devils until I got posted to Lagos. Then she now woke up one night and said she wants to do three days prayer and fasting. And on the third day, a spirit came into the room. A girl, a little girl, walked through the wall and told my wife that Mary, is it Mary? Sarah, Madam Sarah, has instructed me to tell you to stop this prayer. A small lady walked through the wall to threaten my wife. But the small lady could not threaten my wife when I was there. Even if I was not praying or not, the presence of a strong man exercises guardianship. It is that absence, my absence from home, that made my wife to become a warrior. After she did three days prayer, she had that encounter, then she called me, because it's when she enters trouble. She would, hey, my husband. <laughs> Somebody walked through the wall and warned me. I said, what were you doing before the person got agitated? I said, I did uh, three days fast. I said, no, there's nothing like three days prayer and fasting. Minimum is 21 days. Oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. As we are going gradually, we are going gradually. Stay, just stay. I will show you the cycles of the spirit. Just like the moon has a cycle. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Okay. Everything has cycles. And prayer too has cycles. And if you don't know so, you become a victim. And that's why you need to be consistent in the pray place of prayer before you see the power of prayer. So I gave her a few instructions and she became consistent from that time till now. And I watched her grow to become a warrior. When I noticed she became a warrior, I now started sleeping. She was the one praying. I said, <laughs> it's good to have a wife that can pray so that you can rest and sleep. So two of us now have the capacity to exercise guardianship. The hallmark of the presence of a strong man is a capacity for guardianship. Guardianship. When a true strong man is in the territory, the witches will know about you. They will know that there is a problem in that place. They will restrict their activities to other places where your presence and your influence is not. Because whether you are praying or not, there is an entourage that accompanies your presence that gives you the capacity to exercise guardianship. So the Bible says that God revealed his ways to Moses and he revealed his acts through Moses to the children of Israel. So a man that knows God should not say, I know God. No. We should see, you should be able to produce acts because the Bible says, Anyone that knows his God will be strong and will have capacity to do what? Exploit. Don't say you know God. No. Prove it. By exploits. So a man that knows the way of a spirit is a strong man. There is a scripture I love so much in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and I would like to read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. 
If you are still with me, say, sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. He said, cast your bread upon the waters and thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth, and if the tree fall towards the south or towards the north in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, are you there? That's number one. Or how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so knowest thou not the works of God who make it all. It means that the way of the spirit is a mystery. He said, you don't know the way of the spirit the same way you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of that heart that is with child. The way of the spirit is a mystery and it's only those that are willing to have intercourse with God, intimacy with God, that he reveals the knowledge of that mystery. Are you there? The knowledge of that mystery. The knowledge of that mystery is what makes you a strong man. It means you can take advantage of the resources of a spirit being to do exploits. So the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Second definition of a strong man. Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. Turn your Bible quickly. Isaiah 49. Verse number 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or shall the lawful captive be delivered? In Isaiah chapter 49 verse 24, one question is asked two times in two different renderings. The reason one question is asked two times in two different renderings is because the one asking the question uh, perceives that would not be able to understand the question the way it was constituted in the first rendering. Are you there? This is the question. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Now, my understanding of that question is that the person that has taken the prey into captivity is called mighty. Is that true? That is suggestive of the fact that the person that has taken the prey into captivity is strong. Is that true? So, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Then, he knows we will not understand that question, the way it, it was rendered. So he said, or shall the lawful captive be delivered? That is to say that that personality that is called mighty is not called mighty because it has brute strength. It's called mighty because he understands the legalities of the realm of the spirit. Mm, you are not with me. In the practical session of this lecture, this is the theoretical aspect, in the practical session of this le lecture, I will prove to, to us in this congregation that there are people here that are bound by spiritual laws. You don't believe it because, you see, when a man is a convict, it doesn't show on his forehead. There are people in this congregation, when we go to practicals, you will see it clearly that there are people sitting in this congregation now and spiritual laws have been used to bring you into captivity, but you are not aware. Oh, did I make a mistake? No. I was supposed to 
show you people the nine laws that governs the spiritual realm so that it will you'll be able to comprehend don't worry let's let's just go on there are nine laws that governs the spiritual realm and i can i can exercise the laws in a practical under the influence of the anointing to show you that this law exists it is because this law exists that this thing can happen it is because that law exists that this one can happen it is because this law exists that this can happen you see if you've ever found someone that was an ex-witch or an ex-warlock and the person begins to give you insight into the training that they received in order for them to receive um, the ring of witchcraft you will see that first of all they begin to teach them about laws that god created that governs the realm of the spirit because those laws they can bend them they can influence them just like we influence the law of lift which is superior to the law of gravity when we took off from Johannesburg and landed in Gaborone. Those laws, it's not Satan that created them. They are, they are operational. They are existent. Are you there? Now, if you know that they are existent, you use them to your advantage. If you find a man during winter and he's bare-chested, go and secure a bed for him in the hospital because he will need antibiotics. He's trying to walk against the weather and he's going to be wounded. Oh, you're not with me. <laughs> you're not with me. You're not with me. You're not. Oh! Oh, my God. The second definition of a strong man is someone that has understanding in the law. laws that govern the spirit realm he knows the laws he knows the legalities and he knows how to use them to his advantage let me give you a practical scenario in the book of second kings chapter 3 from verse 26 to 27 i give you a practical scenario second kings verse 26 and imagine that our pastor is pastor on Buyani, and there's a building project and pastor on Buyani now says we are going to contribute money for the building project and that's okay so every sunday when we come for service there is building project offering so they will talk about the building talk about how far we have gone talk about how much we have spent and this is how much we need and then they give us the opportunity and then we come and we start giving um, i saw a little girl running around in the hall now imagine that little girl at the back you don't need to at, at my eyes what i'm seeing is enough for you you don't need to talk <laughs> imagine how small that girl is and she too says she wants to give offering so the parent will now give her some puller until that girl becomes a little big. The building project is still on. Until that small girl becomes a teenager. Then we now have enough money. And then Pastor Mbuyane now has an invitation. He's been praying for open doors. And then suddenly he has an invitation from the US. And there's no money to buy a ticket. He went to the embassy they gave him visa and the only money available was the money you are not following me are you here the only, the only money left is what so he now visits the building committee and says see i just got a breakthrough and now i need ticket money and because you guys are in charge of the um building offering I am proposing that a portion of it be given to me, which I will replace. And then the chairman says, no. Then Umbuyande now sacks the chairman, puts another chairman, and they effect his will. Are you with me? Then he now goes to the U.S., preaches, and people bless him because his ministry was powerful. He now came back with some dollars, changed, and replaced that money. Do you realize 
that the money you took, the value of the money you took is different from the value of the money you replaced in the sight of God. Do you know how long it took for them to raise that money? Even that small child, every time she gave, that the parent, every time she gave, eh? oh my God, it was on record. She gave that money until she became a teenager. It doesn't have the same value in the, in the realm of the spirit. It's only someone that lacks spiritual knowledge that would think that polar is polar. I don't want to, if I say the next thing, the things that happened, the things that happened after that, in that congregation, you will not believe that it's just this simple thing that was what opened the door to the demons that began to invade that congregation. A strong man is a man that has spiritual knowledge. And I'm going to show you the pathway to spiritual knowledge. A man that has spiritual knowledge can use it against you. The average believer doesn't press deep in the spirit enough for him to secure spiritual knowledge. But it was spiritual knowledge that refrained David from drinking that water because he knew that at that time, that water had a different value. It was now equivalent to blood. Are you with me? Now, because of the time. Meanwhile, um, uh, we, we, have, we still have some distance to go. But we need to do a little practical. Because many of us, what I'm teaching looks intellectual to you. But the purpose of the teaching is not to bring you intellectual knowledge. It's to bring functional knowledge that you can use to influence your life. And remember, Jesus said that as long as a strong man is present, there are several things that cannot happen except a stronger than he finds expression. There's, a, there's some form of comfort, there's some form of safety that is obtainable, that finds expression when there is a man that knows the way of the spirit around there are some things that will not happen because of his presence. There are some things that Satan cannot do because he's standing on his feet. The Bible says it was only while men slept that an enemy came. As long as those men are standing, that enemy cannot come. Because the estate of the strong man gives him capacity to exercise guardianship. That guardianship is consistent as long as he's there. It is when he's taken away, when he sleeps, that the enemy can come. So in some nations, there are people that Satan need to put to sleep in order for him to come and sow tears. In, in your family, there are people that Satan needs to put to sleep, make them fall into immorality and live in immorality so that he can have the passageway to enter into that place. The technology of heaven is that God sets up guidance over nations, over families, over territories, everywhere. People that have the capacity to stop the onslaught of the kingdom of darkness.